Welcome to Inside City Hall. I'm your host, Mayor Darrell Seymour, and today on our show we have Raul Reyes from the White Mountain Kimber Firefighters. Mesa Fire Medical, right? That's White correct. Mountains. So you have several titles this morning. I do, actually. Um, I, I'm a captain for uh, Timber Mesa Fire and Medical. I'm also the chairperson for the White Mountain Firefighters Foundation, which helps um, our local community with different items during the season. You know, with Christmas coming up, there's always that great need that we have uh, in our community. And I know you guys have been able with your group to go out and make a difference in a lot of people's lives. Share with us some of the things that you do as an organization as well as maybe directly here. Uh, you're a firefighter yourself and, and kind of share with us some of the things that you do. Sure. Uh, so the foundation actually, they uh, help out with Christmas for kids. Uh, they purchase a gifts for the kids, some of that's toys, jackets, clothing. Uh, we also help out with food boxes during the seasons. It's uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, this year we weren't able to do the Thanksgiving due to a, a, a change in the organization, um, but we are going strong with the Christmas this year. You know, about how many uh, children do you, are you able to help? Uh, well, we, we do help uh, on the mountain. We help Blue Ridge, um, the school of uh, Blue Ridge, Linden, Sholo, um, Sequoia. We have the Head Starts, and then uh, Sequoia actually has uh, students bust in from different locations. Uh, some of them are in McNary, some of them from Vernon and the surrounding community. So we do help out from the ages of zero to 14 years of age. Um, and again, that's with all the different things, whether it be toys, clothing, uh, jackets, and um, uh, food as well. Okay. Now, where do the resources come from uh, where you're able to buy these? I mean, or is there anybody who could donate? Kind of share with us that. Yes. N normally what we do is we hold a, um, a dinner auction. Uh, and it's usually in September, October is when we get to do this. And all the proceeds over there, we get donations from different lo um, the local community. We also have donations from the Valley. Um, we've had the Phoenix Coyotes, uh, the Arizona Cardinals donate specific items and then we auction those off for to re make the funds available for our Christmas for kids. Um, we also do a um, at all of your local Circle K's there should be a fire hydrant that's out there that you can actually if you want to donate to that a monetary uh, we take change the paper it folds we don't mind uh, but it all like again it stays on the mountain and um, that's normally where we get most of our donations from. We do have a uh, right now we have an engine that's going to be picking up um, a truckload of toys and gifts that uh, the Ponderosa Bowling Alley, one of the leagues there, has conjured up through their league. So, I mean, it, it is from the mountain. Well, that's fantastic. You know, that local people get involved and, and that the funds that you raise stay local and it, it's helping our, our children locally here. That's true. That's true. Well, we appreciate it. We have some other officers that are going to be joining with us here, or not officers. Well, we do have a police officer or two this morning coming in, and then we have some other firefighters. So look forward to meeting with them and talking with them in a few minutes. Thanks for having us this morning. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Welcome back to Inside City Hall. We now have Officer Alan Rogers from the Sholo Police Department and Kirk Webb from Timber Mesa Fire Department. Officer Rogers, good to have you. Mr. Webb, How great. You, you know, guys, it's Christmas time. It's exciting, and you know, did you order any snow at all? <laughs> I did, but hasn't got me. Well, I guess we got a little bit. Uh, we got just a little <laughs> bit. Okay, just yeah. enough to make things slick and cold. But uh, you know, for, I guess if we get, need our snow we'll just shovel it together and make it happen <laughs> there you go you know we really appreciate uh you guys being here this morning there's some things that we have to talk about that are really exciting in our community and one of the programs i think a lot of people enjoy i know a lot of the children do is a shop with a cop will you share with us uh that concept how you guys raise the money and then how it's decided as to who can go shopping Absolutely. So every year we, we participate in Shop with a Cop and that's made possible through donations from community members and also local businesses. So every year uh, the majority of our um, auto dealerships donate money to, to help uh, uh, fund this program. Also we have local uh, members of the community that donate every single year to um, a lot of our restaurants and other local businesses. So we really appreciate that. Um, and there's 
people I'm probably missing, and if I, I am missing you, I apologize, but we do receive several donations for that, and it, it is greatly appreciated. So all those funds go into an account that's set up, and then we receive applications. This is a copy of one of the applications that's handed out every year, and you can pick these up at the, the Shola Police Department in the Pine Top Lakeside Police Department, and then it's to be filled out. Um, generally, we also give them to the schools because the teachers are the ones that kind of know which kids are in need right. of, of help. So a lot of times the teachers will fill them out in behalf of a student that they might have in their class. And then we have a selection process every year um, that's made up of certain teachers from schools from both the Sholo District and the Pine Top District and then myself and Chief uh, Sergeant up at the Pine Top Lakeside Police Department. And we go through, we look at the need. 50% of whatever they get has to go to clothing. So it's not right. just for toys. Right. Yeah, so um, if they're selected, we contact them. If they don't get a phone call, then unfortunately they're not selected. But we generally try to select as many people as we can. Um, and it's ages 12 and under. So if uh, we look at the need, um, and then also the amount too. So if it's 12 to 10, they get a, a, a set amount. 10 to eight, they get another amount. And then if it's eight to uh, infant, basically, they get another amount. And then that's all given on a prepaid Walmart gift card. And they arrive at Walmart. This year it's gonna be done on Tuesday, December 20th. Um, they'll go, they, they make sure that they have been selected. We give them the gift card and then there's an officer that goes with them and we basically shop and help them pick out items that they need. That's neat. You know what we find a lot of times in these events, I've had opportunity of going on, on a few different things. The, the children start picking out really things that they really do need. Very Absolutely. rarely do they end up going out and getting a toy or, or something. And if they do, it's very small compared to the other things that they need. And it's, you know, it's kind of sad when they understand that real need that they have and even they would rather have that than the discretion of, of a toy that maybe will put a bigger smile Absolutely. on their face just for a moment. But I'll tell you, putting a new pair of shoes or a new coat puts a big smile on their face as well. Absolutely. Really does. And I've had it too where they, they pick an item for um, a neighbor or generally it's not a younger brother or sister because generally in a family we try to, if it's a family that's nominated, we try to pick all the kids that are 12 and under in there. Um, but I've had them pick up clothing items for the neighbor that possibly wasn't selected or something else. So it's pretty, it's pretty awesome to watch that and just see that, you know, they're, they are pretty unselfish when it comes to, right. to gifts and stuff. You know, we've even seen in some of these cases, even some of the stores will give discounts on those days or give, give so much off so they can get a little bit more Absolutely. for them. We appreciate, you know, the people that do that. That's Absolutely. fantastic. So Kim, share with us a little bit. It's Christmas time and, you know, favorite time for a lot of people, but Sometimes at Christmas it can be tragedies too. It can be, you know, we have the lights of the Christmas trees and things like that that falling off the roofs. All those things are associated as well. Yeah, and it's that time of year. It's getting cold, um, so it's the season for chimney fires, uh, other things like that. And and yeah, you know, people that have the live Christmas trees, they've gone out and cut it. And you know, in fact, I heard one somebody comment that man, the trees out here in the forest they're actually already dry before we actually cut them. And we've been in a drought for several years. So the moisture levels in the trees are not that great. So be cautious, you know, and there's videos out there that uh, like the National Institute of, S of Safety Standards has put out a video where a Christmas tree will go up in flames and it's, it's just a matter of seconds. And the whole tree is gone, which then the room is involved and um, it doesn't take long to have a huge tragedy, absolutely. You know, I really encourage people to go on YouTube or go on different places and look just to, for yourself to see how fast a tree goes up. Obviously, they don't do it inside, but take it out and, and when they burn, but the intensity and the heat, I mean, that will go right up through into the roof and before you know it, your entire house would be engulfed. It's, it's just a matter of seconds and yep. it's it amazing. Doesn't take long and, you know, it doesn't matter if, uh, you know, Whatever the case, you know, one of the things we always recommend to people is make sure you have your smoke detectors working in your house. You've changed the batteries. You know, our big emphasis going into the schools this year was making sure that if your smoke detectors are older than 10 years old, change them things out because they don't last forever. They, they do fail. Um, so, 
look at those things. That's that's what's protecting you when everybody's asleep at night. And so if, if there is some reason a tree catches on fire that that your family is protected and you know, it's simple things. Just a matter of seconds. Now when we, let's go back into uh, chimney fires a little bit about what creates a chimney fire you've been burning you know all year long or maybe you haven't that much but you've always started the fire you've always done the same old things you've always done and now all of a sudden one day uh, your house is on fire because of a chimney fire what should they have done or what what's the prevention there yeah, we always recommend to be sure before the season starts have your chimney cleaned in fact it may even need to be cleaned two or three times throughout the season uh, you know and, and look for people that you know licensed professionals things like that uh, there's even companies out there that actually have a camera that they can send up through the chimney and, and look for defects in the pipe because over time heat and metal eventually the metal breaks down and, and falls apart and, and, it, and that heat can spread to the wood parts of the house which then catch on fire um, so get that cleaned inspected and and make sure the wood that you're burning has been seasoned it's it's dry because that that wood that's still a little bit green, um, it's going to create, it's not going to burn completely and efficiently. And so it's going to uh, coat the chimney pipe with creosote. And that creosote is basically unburned fuel. When enough of it gets um, built up inside there, uh, it can cause fires and, and that it'll get to a certain temperature. And once it reaches that temperature that it catches on fire, then that's when you get that chimney fire. And there's, there's times that I've heard of chimney fires, it sounds like a freight train. You know, it gets going that that intense. quick and intense, exactly, and it's uh, and it can cause attic fires, and 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 that's what we've seen a few of those where where the attic will catch on fire, and you don't even know that you got a fire going above you, and then and then you have that tragedy. Yeah, you know, it's it's really sad uh, when the aftermath of a fire and things that can happen, especially during the time of season that you're you're celebrating, you want to be a family, the last thing you want to do is have some type of a tragedy that takes place. You know, it's amazing, I, I have in, in my work profession of being able, going out and inspecting homes uh, that maybe somebody's selling, getting ready for a new buyer. And I can tell you this last year, I, there was four specific homes that I wouldn't, you know, recommend for insurance until they had done some things because I go out and look where the chimney is and you can see they've been, you know, so close of catching on fire. The outside of the siding is just charred and, and everything. And you point it out to the people and they go, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that was going on. And so it's also being eyes and, and smelling and, and all those things that take place, especially those first fires that they start the season. Yeah, in fact, one of the things that I've noticed in investigating some of these chimney fires, uh, or if you got that attic space and you know blown in insulation has been a you know on the rise of, it's a lot easier to get it in there and to increase the efficiency of your home but I've, I've seen where some of that blown insulation has actually you know gotten up against that chimney pipe and that's actually what's caused started the fire up in the attic space so you got to make sure that 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 area around the pipe stays it's got to be free and clear than nothing combustible up against it and insulation can catch on fire. Very much so there. You know, the other thing we have is putting up decorations, uh, the lights, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, we want moisture and everything, but maybe somebody didn't squeeze that quite tight enough, and now we get electrical fires when there's moisture placed on them, they start shorting out, and those things can cause fires. So check all those plugs, be careful with that. Uh, your eye stands, eye shields, all those things can be part of a hazard that can contribute to more and more that's happening. Yeah, and, and, and don't pull the, the, well, the National Lampoon's Christmas vacation, you know, <laughs> overloading those circuits, you know, and uh, be cautious of those things. Um, use use and, and inspect the, the lights and the wires before you put them up, you know. It, if, if they've got f areas where the wire's exposed, that's a problem, you know. Right. That, those need to be tossed and, and get some new ones. You know, it's a little bit of expense at some point, but safety over expenses you know you can't replace a life that's right yeah you know, that's a great movie to watch i don't know is it one of your guys' <laughs> favorites Christmas <Absolutely>. night. <laughs> you yeah. know you turn that on and and it can tell you what not to do there's about five things from dumping sewer into the drains <laughs> to, to kidnapping your boss let's see to you know shorten the lights out and things that happen but that that is a fun movie to happen so we're getting ready to uh with christmas right after christmas we'll be kicking off the new year 
Officer Roger, share with us a little bit of what, what happens here at midnight, uh, what we do downtown here, drop the deuce things. Well, we like to bring in the new year by dropping a big deuce of clubs. <laughs> so yeah. that's always fun. Um, it's a it's a great event. I believe in the years past they've done live music. I don't know if they're doing that again this year and stuff, but it's a great thing for the community to come out and a, a great event for them to participate in. I know a lot of times people do other extracurricular activities on New Year's and along those lines we are doing uh, DUI enforcement as usual. Um, and contrary to what a lot of people think when we do our DUI enforcement, our goal is actually to get zero DUIs. That would be a great night. So we're not there to try to arrest people and get people into trouble. If we can make zero arrests, that's a, that's a perfect night. But unfortunately, some people do choose to drink and then drive. And the reason we do that is for obviously safety reasons. We don't want them to kill themselves or, or kill somebody else when they're, when they're impaired and driving. So a good thing to do, an alternative to, to drinking and driving would be to come out and participate in the, the drop the deuce here in the, the city of Sholo, here at the city of Sholo. You know, it was one of those things when we first announced, I think this will be our fourth or fifth year. I'm not, I'm not real sure how many years we've done it. Uh, at the fifth year going but it was one of the top events uh, or new novelty type things of, of dropping a deuce other places I think Flagstaff drops the pine cone and different things happen but we can't compete with uh, New York City but at the same time it, having our own, own little deuce that drops it's kind of a, a neat little event that people have and we're not going to be able to do it with, with uh, Cooley and Clark this year, but uh, they're, they're going to be absent, so we need more people to show up, right? Oh, Absolutely. And we will still have the fireworks to go off with that, too. So, so you're going to be lighting them? Uh, I, I will probably be assisting, yes. <laughs> okay. That's right. Tell us a little bit about fireworks, uh, you know, to be safe with them, because I know there's people who, who you know, they're legal that would go ahead and, and shoot off around you know, New Year's, it's always a temptation. And, and let's talk a little bit, and then I'll come back and let you talk a little bit about gun safety on New Year's <laughs> as well, because we do have some laws on the books now. You know, the state of Arizona has made some fireworks legal, not all fireworks, you know, so you got to take and look at, you know, make educate yourself and see which ones are actually legal to use. Uh, things that leave the ground uh, are not, you, use they're not uh, acceptable for use in Arizona unless you're a licensed uh, uh, contractor firework specialist and and you're setting it up for like for the city or something like that and you, and you go through a permitting process and um, right. but some there are some pretty cool basic fireworks that are okay to use and you know being that it's cold and more than likely you know but you still got to be safe because things can catch on fire in fact just the other day we had a brush fire you know here it is in the first part of December and we're having a brush fire. It's kind of crazy. Uh, so things still catch on fire and, and it can get out of hand. So be always be safe. Um, sparklers, you know, just even though they say that they're, they're safe and kid friendly, um, there's intense heat coming off of those things. You know, they can cause some serious injuries and they have caused serious injuries in, in cases. So just be cautious. Don't try to use them differently than how the, the manufacturer says to use them. I think with sparklers, you either burn your hands or burn your feet because people are either barefooted <laughs> walking around, and when they're done, they throw it off, and next thing they know, they have those two things along right. with the other thing. Tell us about shooting guns in uh, New Year's. Uh, we don't do that maybe as much as they did in the past, but we <laughs> want to remind people of the hazards that can be associated with that. Absolutely. It, it, you know, at the stroke of midnight, don't start grabbing your guns out and putting them in the air and, and shooting them off. Obviously, you're accountable for wherever that, that bullet goes. And if it goes up, obviously, it's got to come back down too. So um, here in the city, there is no, no shooting uh, firearms in city limits. And even, even if you live out in Navajo County, a lot of people think, well, I live in county, so I can shoot wherever I want. But if you're within so many feet to an occupied structure, it's also illegal. And there's state law on that, and there's also city code on that. Okay, that's great. Well, you know what? It sounds like uh, you guys are ready. Uh, and hopefully people else, if we can get that snow that you've ordered and make sure it shows <laughs> up here and the things we have going on. You know, I think it's a great time for our citizens. It's a great time to get involved. And in. thanks so much for what you do for uh, help you know, shop with a cop. I think that's a great organization putting that together that expands beyond just Sholo, uh, Pine Top and other areas. And, you know, we don't want any child not to have proper clothing at Christmas time. And, you know, there's, we just kind of call out to people, 
we have such an awesome community. If, if you're in need, if you contact City Hall or, or even the fire department, some of those places, and just uh, let people know that your concerns, and I'm sure that there's enough uh, contributions, things that we have going on in our community, we'll make sure that your Christmas is a little better and happy. Absolutely. Yeah, we have a very compassionate community, and, and they do a great job of helping us out and helping other people out. It's, it's, it's a good place to be. It's great. Well, let's be safe. Let's have fun, and thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for joining us at Inside City Hall. We wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.